When I first started playing Dota, I remember thinking it was weird that Zeus from our IRL myths was there, while most other things were new, unique things to the Dota universe. And then I got really annoyed when the Greek and Roman pantheons got mixed when Mars was announced. I was very happy to see that they explained the last part, but it's still a bit weird that one of the few things that keep showing up in the Dotaverse from our own world is the Greco-Roman pantheon. The only other thing that comes close is the Romescu, Omniscience, and Knights of the Fold, who may believe in the Dota equivalent of Christianity, and Brewmaster's people Yo and Oyo, which is basically Yin and Yang. But they at least changed the names to distance it from the Dota ideology a little bit. So why is the Greek myth from Dota 2 the exact copy of the IRL one? Who is Zeus and Mars and what's the relationship? What else in the Dotaverse is related to Greek myth? Keep watching to find out. So one of my theories about why the Greco-Roman pantheons exist in the Dota universe as well is because the reality of the Dota universe was once part of our own multiverse. It was part of a huge mesh which held all of reality and Weaver was given a small part of it to maintain. But when he started to tinker with it, he was punished by having that part cut off from the rest before they rewove the part without him and banished him to seclusion. While it was meant to punish him, Weaver was happy because now he could finally do what he had dreamed of. Instead of just maintaining reality, he could reweave it with his own original ideas. Weaver is basically the writer of the Dota universe. And if the writer loved some parts of the old reality, such as still including humans and human culture, the same languages, the laws of the universe, etc., then it's not such a hot take to say that maybe Weaver is just a big fan of Greek myth, so he carried it over. Of course, what I mean is the original Dota 1 writer did, but that's projected onto Weaver, in my theory. I believe the Greco-Roman gods are from the same plane of existence as the Spirit Brothers, who are a kind of godly being called Celestial. We see this place called Celestar in Zeus' cosmetic, which may be the place Celestials live. The Celestial, Elemental, or the Spirit Plane, or whatever you want to call it, could be the one we in real life call the Fifth Plane, where a divine, but not the creator, is found. IRL that's Buddha and Jesus, but in the Dota world, if my theory is correct, that means stuff like the Celestials, aka the Spirit Brothers, the Greek and Roman gods, and original Dota gods like for example Selimene, Nyctasha, and the Omniscience. Now, who are the Greek myth heroes? Zeus is, according to himself, the lord of heaven and father of gods. Up until Mars, it was heavily debated whether or not he was actually a god, but now it's pretty clear he was telling the truth. Zeus is incredibly promiscuous and will breed with almost anything despite having a wife and children. His wife, probably Hera, eventually grew tired of this, so she divorced him, made him immortal and took half his power, and he is now on earth to prove he can be faithful. One of their children is Mars, but Zeus is Greek and Mars is the Roman equivalent of the Greek Ares. How does that make sense? Well, that is actually basically Mars' lore. As the god of war, he used to wage a lot of them, but eventually he grew tired of it and decided it was time for a change of authority. He rebranded himself as Mars and is now trying to extinguish the old pantheon to rebuild his new one. That is likely the Roman one. Mars confirms the existence of both his mother, which is likely Hera, his uncles and Zeus's brothers, who are likely Poseidon and Hades, and as a whole, he is walking proof that we can assume all the Greek gods exist. So that's the Greco-Roman gods. But here's also a few other heroes referencing Greek myth. Medusa is a Gorgon, who may be related to the Maranth people, both because they were born of a sea goddess and because of how similar, for example, Naga Siren and the Naga culture is to Medusa, and it's heavily Greek in aesthetic. Medusa was the only mortal among her sisters, so when the Gorgon realm was invaded and her sisters kidnapped for probably the slave trade in Revtel, she herself was ignored. Her mortality did not interest them. To help avenge her people and save her sisters, she begged her sea goddess mother for power in exchange for her beauty. And if the exchange was proportionate, then her current immense power should be a good indicator of how beautiful she once was. While Dota Medusa's story is sad, it's nothing compared to the IRL Medusa. She was also an extremely beautiful maiden, but she ignored suitors and instead dedicated herself in service to her favorite goddess, Athena. But Athena grew jealous of Medusa's fairness, and when Medusa was raped by Poseidon in one of Athena's temples, Athena cursed Medusa with serpent hair that would petrify anyone who looked at her face. She was punished for being raped. Athena also helped Perseus later slay the Gorgon by using her shield as a mirror so he could look at her and fight her. And as he murdered her, 
her unborn child from Poseidon's rape sprung out as Pegasus. Yeah, Greek myth can be pretty metal. Abaddon's House of Avernus is a reference to Avernus, which is believed to be the entrance to the underworld. Bane's name, Atropos, is also the name of one of the three Greek fates, death. The three fates are birth, life, and death, and is symbolized by a thread. The youngest sister weaves it, the middle sister maintains it, and the oldest, Atropos, cuts it. Broodmother's name, Arachnia, may be a reference to the Greek character Arachne. She, like Medusa, made the mistake of being better than Athena. She was a master weaver, and declared she was even better than Athena herself. They held a contest to test their skill and started weaving. Athena weaved a picture of the gods above men, not equals. Arachne, on the other hand, weave what ways the gods have abused mortals, Zeus in particular for tricking and seducing women. Arachne had not just insulted the gods, but also managed to weave a better piece than Athena, so in jealousy she raged, tore Arachne's creation to shreds, and hit her on the head three times. Ashamed, Arachne hanged herself. Athena would not allow her to get away so easily though, and turned her to a spider so she would weave forever. Nyx's assassin's goddess, Nyx, is also the name of the Greek goddess of night, but they are probably unrelated. While the phoenix in Dota 2 is a living sun, the phoenix of Greek myth is a bird that can be reborn from its ashes. This video is dedicated to my patron Gelfling, thank you so much for your support and generosity. Until next time, peace.